investors track under the theme holistic growth and national development. Today we'll be having four sessions and each session will be chaired by an eminent professor. Let me now introduce Professor Prasanna Galhena, who will be the chairperson of the Life Sciences One session. Professor Prasanna Galhena is a professor of the Department of Biochemical and Clinical Chemistry, Faculty of Medicine, University of Karenia. His research interests are cancer genetics, herbal and complementary medicine, proteomics in oral squamous cell carcinoma and clinical biochemistry. His postgraduate studies were carried out at University of Peradeniya, Sri Lanka and University of Kalaniya, Sri Lanka. He has served as a research fellow at the Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research India and Department of Human Genetics, Sri Ramachandra University, Chennai, India. He is the coordinator of the Center for National and he also he is also a visiting cytogenesis at the Lanka Hospitals. It is a great pleasure to have you with us sir, today. Let me now introduce the panel of judges for the oral session as well. We have with us today Dr. Nandana Gunavikrama, who is a senior lecturer of KDU Care. We have Dr. Ketsrija Sekara, who is a senior lecturer of the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences. And we also have Dr. Niroshima Vitanage, who is a senior lecturer of the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Sri Javadinapura. Over to you, sir, Professor Galhena, to start the session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Anjala, uh, for the introducing myself for this session. And good morning to all uh, of the participants who will be present in the fine leads. Um, right. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, we have five uh, uh, sessions today, right now. Uh, so, in the line of <coughs> applied and basic sciences. Uh, so, a few housekeeping rules uh, for you all. Uh, so, we have <coughs> a 15 minute session for each presentation. So all of that, you will have 12 minutes to present your findings. And then we have three minutes for the uh, discussion. Uh, so at the end of 10 minutes, you will hear the bell, right? And then uh, after 12 minutes, you will hear the bell again. So by that time, you have time your presentation and uh, make sure that you are uh, finishing. So then we have three minutes session for the Q&A. And then, uh, so that is how the proceeding goes on. Okay, uh, so let me let me start with the first presentation. Okay. Uh, so the uh, the first presentation for the day, uh, the gene expression and uh, expression analysis of human breast adenocarcinoma in seven cells treated with Sri Lanka red seaweed, seaweed, Brasilaria edulis silva. So the uh, the paper is presented by uh, uh, M D T L Gunatilaka, K W Samrakorn, P Ranasinghe, and L C D P Iris. So over to you to start the work. Well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm Tilina Lakmini Gunatilaka, PhD student at University of Sri Jayava, Dhanapura. Today I'm going to present you a part of my research study. This is basically related to the gene expression analysis of human breast adenocarcinoma cells treated with the Sri Lankan red seaweeds. Brasilaria idealis. As we all know, the burden of cancer is increased significantly around the globe. Cancer is one of the most serious health problems worldwide and it is characterized by uncontrolled cellular growth with metastasis lesion. 
According to the WHO statistics, by 2035, the world could see 24 million new cancer cases. When we move to the Sri Lankan statistics in 2018, around 23,530 cancer cases were reported in Sri Lanka, which is accompanied by 14,013 deaths. Among the different types of cancer, breast cancer is one of the most leading type of cancer, mainly prevalent among the women, adult women population in Sri Lanka. As higher incidences of cancer are reported, it can be evident that the available therapeutic interventions for several side interventions have several side effects and that, that can increase the risk of developing secondary cancers due to the long-term toxic potential. Therefore, it is vital to keep searching for an effective drug that may benefit for the cancer patient with minimum side effects. Other than the herbal medicines, seaweeds are a rich source of bioactive metabolites in drug development and nutraceuticals. Among the different types of seaweeds, Gracilaria edulis is a red algae, which belongs to the family of Gracilaria. Polyphenols purified from red seaweeds are considered as a rich source of natural antioxidants that can further be utilized to develop potential anti-cancer drugs. Therefore, the present study was mainly aimed to investigate the gene expression analysis of human breast adenocarcinoma cells treated with the Sri Lankan red seaweeds, Gracilaria edulis. The general objective of this study was to investigate the gene expression analysis of human breast adenocarcinoma cells treated with the Sri Lankan red seaweeds, Gracilaria edulis, and specific objectives of this study were to determine the cytotoxic effect by MTTSA, to examine the apoptotic morphological alterations by cellular morphology, and finally, to investigate the apoptosis-related gene expression analysis using real-time PCR technique. Initially, the permit to collect algae sample was obtained from the Department of Wildlife Conservation, and the marine red seaweed, Gracilaria edulis, was manually collected from Kalpitya area. This is how the sample was prepared. Initially, clean, air-dried and powdered sample was extracted to 70% methanol, and then polysaccharide portion was removed using 70% ethanol, and finally we have obtained polyphenol-rich methanol extract which was subjected to partition with hexane chloroform and ethyl acetate and obtained four fraction, including crude methanol extract. And then the crude methanol extract and four fraction were subjected to determine in vitro cytotoxic as well as apoptotic morphological alterations. Based on the results, the potent fraction was selected to analyze the apoptotic gene expression. When we move to the results and discussion section, here in this slide, you can observe the results of cytotoxic activity as determined by MTTSA. When you just look at this table, you can observe hexane fraction of Gracilaria edulis exhibited potent cytotoxic activity compared to the standard cyclohexamide. So during the MTTSA, yellow tetrazoleum MTT reagent is reduced to the purple formers and crystal by the activity of mitochondria of fiber cells. In addition to that, you can observe some of the graph which shows the percentage, cytotoxicity, percentage cytotoxicity of samples compared to the standard cyclohexamide. During the apoptosis, cells display typical morphological features such as cellular aggregation and formation of cell clumps, Chromatin condensation, nuclear fragmentation, and bulge towards cell membrane, cell membrane blebbing, micronuclei formation, cell shrinkage, and cellular death. Here in this slide, you can observe the morphological alterations as observed by phase contrast inverted microscope. 
here uh, to confirm the apoptosis, the morphological changes in treated MCF7 cells were observed after 24 hours of incubation time compared to the untreated cells, which is known as control. According to the observation, hexane fraction treated cells reveal prominent apoptotic morphological features compared to the standard cyclohexamide, while untreated cells maintain their original morphology. So based on the results, hexane fraction of Brasilaria edulis was selected to analyze the apoptosis-related gene expression. So here we have used P53, P21, BATS, and BCL2 as apoptotic genes. Beta actin was used as a housekeeping gene. The gene P53 is a crucial tumor suppressor that regulates the downstream effect of P21, which is a potent inhibitor of cell cycle kinases. Other than that, it can also function as a transcription activator of genes, which are essential for cell cycle arrest, DNA repair, and apoptosis. In addition, P53 can transcriptionally activate proapoptotic BACs and it can block the function of BCL2 chain. BACs is a proapoptotic family of protein which mediates the cell death by apoptosis. In contrast, BCL2 is an anti-apoptotic protein which restrains the function of proapoptotic proteins by maintaining the mitochondrial membrane. So here in this slide, you can observe the results obtained for P53 and P21 gene expression analysis. So if you can just look at this graph, you can observe the relative expression of P53 and P21 gene treated with hexane fraction, right? So uh, according to the results, 30 microgram per ml of hexane fraction treated MCF7 cells upregulated P53 gene more prominently compared to the standard, as well as it upregulated P21 gene more prominently compared to the standard. In this slide, you can observe the relative expression of BATS and BCL2 gene expression. So as I have mentioned you earlier, BATS is a proapoptotic family of protein which mediates the cell death via apoptosis and BCL2 is an anti-apoptotic protein. So when you can look at this graph, you can observe 30 microgram per ml of hexane fraction treated MCF7 cells upregulated proapoptotic BAX gene more prominently compared to the standard cyclohexamide. In contrast, Standard cyclohexamide treated MCF7 cells upregulated BCL2 gene, which is, a anti which is an anti apoptotic protein compared to the samples. The expression level of the BAX to BCL2 ratio can be used to detect the influence of the ability of cells to respond to an apoptotic signal. If you can look at the graph, you can observe a higher expression ratio of BAX and BCL2 in the hexane fraction treated MCF7 cells, which is around 29.69. So finally, the finding of this study concluded that the hexane fraction of Brasilaria edulis in apoptosis in human breast adenocarcinoma cells, mainly via the activation of P53 and P21 gene. Therefore, hexane fraction of Brasilaria edulis can be used for the development of a new drug or supplement to treat the patient suffering from breast adenocarcinoma. I would like to acknowledge, to acknowledge to the university research grant and these are my references. Thank you. Thank you. For the nice presentation, I am Dr. Niroshima Vittanage here. Uh, uh, just tell me how you select the potential fraction of the Vesiana edulas. Yes, uh, so uh, this ab abstract is mainly for the gene expression analysis matter. Yeah. So, 
that uh, I have uh, obtained root methanol extracts and other for fraction, and it was subjected to determine the cytotoxic activity by IMTT assay and neutral red assay. So in addition to that, to induce apoptosis, so I have uh, observed the morphological alteration through phase contrast inverted microscopes and the fluorescent stain her stain. And in addition to that, I have determined caspase 37 activity, which is not which was not included in this abstract since this was a part of my PhD study. So based on the all experiments, I have selected hexane fraction as a potent fraction that was subjected to gene expression analysis. Okay, thank you, Ms. Delina. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Gunatilaka, can I uh, can I get some clarification on your work? Yes, sir. Uh, have you worked on the MDM2? Sorry, sir? Have you worked on the MDM2? So when you're talking about the P53, yes. so you look at the other aspect on how the P53 activity is sustained to the MDM2. As you all know, that the MDM2 uh, can nullify... Yeah, so that is one aspect because only thing overexpression of P53 will not guarantee that it is uh, <laughs> for the apoptosis. Right? So that aspect has to be done. And then uh, my final question: uh, What is uh, now? Suppose if you are sub, uh, if you are suggest uh, if you are giving the suggestion for the uh, for the novel drug lead, right? By using this hexane fraction, uh, what is the way forward? Yeah, uh, the, uh, since we have already done the gene expression analysis, we thought to conduct the Western blot analysis to confirm the pathway other than using some inhibitors. So after that, uh, so uh, I we can uh, go for the bio bioactivity guided fractionation to isolate the active compound. Then we can uh, utilize this active compound to determine the uh, cytotoxicity and the apoptotic potential. Again, based on that, we can do a, a real-time PCR as well as for the Western blot to confirm the isolated, confirm the apoptotic activity of isolated compounds. Okay, that's all. I, I have one question. Uh, now, you have done these studies um, on um, uh, carcinoma cells. How would you um, think, like, you have you done these um, on uh, normal cells as well? Yeah, so uh, actually, uh, I have conducted uh, using the same fraction for a uh, normal virus in line. So unfortunately, I couldn't include this part for the abstract since this was a uh, the word limited abstract. So when I just uh, discuss about the cytotoxic activity of the potent hexane fraction uh, using the virus in line, uh, it was I have obtained IC50 around 15 microgram per ml compared to the MCF7 uh, cells, so which was uh, which was less compared to the cytotoxic activity of the cancer cells. What about the gene expression? Because virus cell line is an insect cell line, right? So have yeah. you, have it you looked? Is, it is not the insect cell line. It is actually uh, the monkey's uh, kidney cell line. So uh, still we couldn't go for that gene expression analysis up to that extent using the virus cell line. So we hope to conduct that part also. Okay. Ms. Kunat, can I uh, suggest there? Yes. Uh, so this array of uh, work, I think we have to focus on three aspects. One thing is uh, how the triple positive work for you, triple, uh, triple negative work for you. And which is uh, triple negative is the most challenging there. So better to look at on triple negative, you have the cell line to work with. At the same time, I'm not happy with the Vero cell line because it is, uh, you get the differences in species. Probably you can work on the normal lung uh, fibroblast, uh, that is human fibroblast cell line. And uh, just to make the toxicity uh, work out, because only thing is what is right now, we have the challenge of this um, uh, uncoordinated side effects by these uh, anti-cancer therapies. So we have to really look at the, what would be the impact of this normal cells by giving these uh, novel properties. So probably Vero would not be a good candidate for you, but uh, you have to look at, uh, you can look at on the, uh, the lung fibroblast, or you can, you, can, you can even look at the peripheral uh, lymphocytes. 
as a suspicion line, a primary line, can work it out. Thank you very much, sir. Actually, we were uh, very difficult in uh, finding a cell line. So that's why uh, we found the Vero cell lines as just to uh, check the uh, metabolism or the activity of a normal cell lines. We have used it because it was very difficult to find a human human normal cell line. That's why, sir. I, uh, I totally to agree with you. I totally agree with you because you have a difficulty in getting them down from the ATCC and yes. can be expensive as well. Yes, but sir. yeah, so we have to work on those burdens. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, thank you very much. And sorry if there were any disturbance during my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, with that, uh, we will go into the second presentation lineup for today. Uh, so, Okay, so the second presentation for today is the molecular docking analysis of novel angiotensin 1 converting enzyme inhibitor. Peptide isolates from cultured murine microalgae, nanochlorophis occluta. The paper is authored by KW Samarafone and JY Jion. Over to, over to you, Mr. Dr. Kalpa Samarafone. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my presentation is uh, molecular docking analysis of an novel angiotensin converting enzyme in the peptides isolated from cultured marine microalgae and chlorophyll oculata. So this presentation I, uh, is based on my the findings, uh, which, is, uh, which was done in my PhD later stage and uh, part of the, my project and at the Jeju National University of South Korea. So let me go to the presentation. So hypertension. The hypertension is the elevated blood pressure. Uh, is a serious medical condition. As you know, if measured the systolic blood pressure, reading is greater than 140. And the diastolic blood pressure, uh, greater reading is greater than 90 millimeter uh, mercury. So it would be the high blood pressure. So as you know, the, this is the main risk factor that associated with uh, cardiovascular diseases for the higher mortality in the... Uh, and also the estimated increase by 60% of total 1.5 billion adults in 2025 in both economically developed and developing countries. If you go to the statistics, global statistic, as you see one of three, one, one in every three adults has hypertension and in, in Africa, there are the highest uh, prevalence uh, hypertension around 46%. And also it is very common in the developing countries where two in uh, every three uh, adults have this condition. And also it's, a, it's known as a silent killer, which is lead uh, to stroke, heart attack and coronary artery diseases. So let me talk about the renal We don't see the presentation top line. I guess. Sorry for that. Uh, uh, for the renal angiotensin converting uh, adrenal system, actually, this is the uh, we want to uh, highlight in very importantly because the RAA system is the hormonal system within the body, and that is essential for the regulator of blood pressure and fluid balance. The system mainly comprises, as you see. Unfortunately, you don't see that the uh, title of this presentation, uh, renin, angiotensin enzymes, and aldosterone. So basically, there are two key roles in this hypertension, uh, clinical hypertension, where the inhibition of angiotensin 1, as you see in the number 1, converting uh, from the angiotensin may inhibit by renin. And there's another uh, inhibitory peptide blocking the conversion of angiotensin 2 from angiotensin 1 by the AC inhibitor. So therefore, this is the basic understanding the AC inhibitors are the most commonly and widely prescribed medicine for the hypertension. So what there is happening primarily regulated by the rate of renal fluid. So there was a hypothesis 
can we find the any as the inhibitory peptide from the natural resources so that's what my objective was to find some natural especially marine organisms where they have high protein content as no so microalgae the marine microalgae are the, the single celled and eukaryotic microscopic organisms which are uh, the bottom of the chain of uh, food chain and have been served as a primary producer in aquatic sources uh, either in fresh or marine so contributing to almost 70 percent of the global oxygen demand so among them the marine microalgae as an evolutionary form of organisms are showing an extraordinary adaptation in the oceans so in the world market the marine uh, algae based world market if you see the global statistics there you see the uh, mainly europe uh, northern america and the asia pacific countries are dominated in this situation and they are increasing demand for the applications such as you see in the graph uh, food and beverages uh, and fuel animal feed cosmeceuticals and nutraceuticals such as uh, so on and so forth so in order to consider the applications there are highly advanced in the food and beverage in recent years however despite that the prevalence of biofuel sector were in most in few years back a couple of decades actually so therefore what we want to study here the microalgae the algal biomass has unusual quality of nutrients that include rich source of proteins there are a range of 30 to 70 percent of proteins and also carbohydrates uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids some uh, secondary metabolites vitamins and minerals so our focus was to produce uh, the particular type of strains uh, marine microalgae based on their interest actually this is the way that we want to find out particular strains is based the few steps we have to find that being able to successfully go in the larger scale cultivation and subsequently as you see in the graph uh, the flow chart we have to subsequently extraction and the purification is targeting for the desired product so why we want to see that one because in our case in our study we find the particular strains which are having high protein high, high lipids uh, can be taken to uh, consider which can be target for the protein extraction so uh, our target was i'm sorry if you don't see the type of uh, type is anocorpus oculator this is a species where we uh, used uh, it's a interested uh, in, uh, in our case in unicellular microalga found in marine uh, micro uh, environment marine environment and in fact it does not uh, have identified as a good source for the food sector until we found and this was very common uh, with the uh, you know bio uh, recent studies actually until recent studies we found that it's a very famous for industry in producing bio oils biofuels our research objectives the investigation of angiotensin 1 converting enzyme inhibited proteins and uh, proteins and peptides via protease assisted extraction culture blue green micro alga nanochloride oculator and we determined potency of ac inhibitory activity using structural activity relationship by modeling molecular docking studies for the peptides so what we have done was that we cultured this particular microalga in a conveyor medium given the light dark uh, 20 course to uh, zero period and inoculation with uh, continuous supply, supply and we found that uh, we got the sample marine algae uh, filtered uh, and we got the uh, centimeter sample and then we uh, perform it for the freeze dry then freeze dried sample as you see the flow that we uh, perform with the substrate as a microalgae biomass and we use uh, different commercial proteases such as uh, pepsin trypsin alpha chymotrypsin alkylase nutrients such uh, uh, and proteases as well but i focus in here for the proteases and based on the optimum condition within 24 hours we could be able to identify the hydrolysis and we determine the ac inhibitor activity with the, uh, the known uh, method uh, performed by measuring the concentration of hippuric acid liberated from HHL substrate. Uh, and we use the uh, captopril as a standard uh, positive control of, for uh, activity. And here, 
we have sort of uh, chromatography steps we uh, you know perform uh, SDS page to determine for the fraction of molecule size of the proteins and we use the ultra uh, membrane filtration with uh, 5 kilodalton and the 10 kilodalton molecular cutoff weight to uh, see that which uh, fraction we can use and we based on the bioactivity guided fractionation we did the uh, gel fluorescent electroscopy actually size uh, exclusion from photography uh, uh, G25 uh, separate column was used to run and get the elute uh, with the different sizes. And further, we run with the reverse phase HPLC to elute that uh, with the strongest active uh, fraction of uh, this protein hydrolysates. And when uh, finally we determine the amino acid sequences and molecular mass of the purified ACE inhibitor peptide uh, with hybrid uh, quadrophol, time of flight, LCMS, MS spectrophotometer right so here you see the uh, results and discussion actually here we have selected five different microalga actually there are three main types one is a cyanobacteria one is a dinoflagellates other one is the uh, diatoms and the uh, dinoflagellates and the cyanobacteria so here we have four five particular strains and we found the proteins are prominent in their proximate chemical community and further here the spectra that at the absorbance at 280 nanometer we found that uh, three fractions separated at the uh, del, uh, you know uh, uh, ultra filtration membrane and the f1 fraction we found that uh, highest activity and the least ac uh, ic 50 value and further we run with the rp uh, pure space hdlc and here you see the two fractions con uh, with the activity with the purification fold uh, with the 40 and 36. And also we see that you see that uh, two novel peptides we isolated. Uh, one is a GMNLLCP and the other one is LCE. Here you see the uh, tripeptide with the IC50, 167 micromole and heptapeptide, which was uh, 124 micromole with the activity IC50 value, right? So here the structures we elucidated with the NMR also we confirmed and we synthesized them and we put for the docking studies. Actually molecular docking is a crystal, as you see in the crystal structure for the ACE was obtained from the protein data uh, bank. And uh, we use the docking studies using the C docker in Aquas uh, Studio, uh, Discovery Studio 3.5. And you see the, uh, here the catropyl is a commercial standard uh, for the ACE inhibitor, uh, inhibitor activity and you see the 2D uh, program uh, AC ligand complex with the residual extractions. So see, you can see the different uh, two types of uh, bioactive peptides with the isomers, and we found the AC ligand complex for the LEQ1 and the AC uh, other heptapeptide complex at the below. As you see here, it's very nice to see that sink. Uh, we saw that association of amino acid residual interaction with the metal ion H bond interactions, including. Uh, difference residual in the amino acid in their use sites. And based on that, we have summarized that uh, you see the binding energy and seed of interaction. We found that our GMN NLLTP heptapeptide isomer got the bi less uh, binding energy compared to the other. Uh, so we can conclude that triterpenes, uh, which we found, has particularly we have found that in the many uh, references, this is the way that because the hydrophobic amino acid at the amino terminals. And carboxylic uh, aromatic amino acid at the carboxylic carboxy terminus and the middle positive amino acid will be the best uh, form of tripeptide can be. So AC inhibitors uh, work on here, uh, I think. And we found the heptapeptide with the proline as a end of the C terminus purified peptide, and that's also very high uh, strong activity, uh, and which is very preventing the digestion of the enzymes in their stomach. So this is the uh, path mechanism that I pruned. So based on that, novel antihypertensive peptides were purified from the pepsin hydrolysis of the cultured marine microalga with the sequential spectrophotometric uh, step. And we determine this has the antihypertensive activity. Actually, this is a part of the activity. We have determined the digestive capacity in vitro digestion activity in the stomach. Uh, in uh, in vitro study and we determine the cell activity and also we determine the synthetic uh, in the animal model and thank you for everyone to listen and these are the people who want to acknowledge in this study thank you very much
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kalpa uh, Samarakon, for your wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, so the uh, the paper is open for discussion. Thank you for the presentation, Dr. Kalpa. Uh, I just want to know the uh, as, as, as I have not mistaken, you have studied the uh, uh, five species of microalgae, isn't it? Actually, we have uh, studied five different microalgae. But in this study, I focus only one particular species. Actually, I couldn't put that all the data in here. They have yeah. different. Yeah. And also, you have told, uh, like, you have selected the one with the high lipid content. No, high protein content. High, high protein. protein. Yeah. Is there any? Uh, the, okay. Okay. That's what I wanted to uh, clarify. Thank you, Dr. Carl. Any other questions uh, from the audience? Okay, Dr. Kalpa, I have one uh, query as a, as a, a, a clinical aspect, uh, aspect. Now, the docking and uh, in vitro studies might work nicely. My the question is how feasible and how effective these compound in uh, in vivo setup. Thank you. That's a wonderful question I got. Uh, so what we have done is we synthetically designed this peptide and we determine the same reproducibility and the, how to uh, do the same uh, preclinical activity as we found in the original or natural sources. We did it like actually and we did and we found that it's a not much cost, big deal to synthesize them in the uh, laboratory. And we uh, applied for the rat models, uh, in vivo model actually, and we determined in with the Huvex cells human uh, umbilical endothelial, endothelial, uh, vein endothelial cells, which is the most prominent cell line to determine the anti-hypertensive uh, activity in vitro, and which have been done already. And we determine the synthetic peptide for the, how it will be digested in the, in the stomach, because this is natural sources. If you have a protein source to take as oral uh, drug or oral uh, supplement. So if there are any breakage in the US stomach, because we use the proteases, commercial proteases, but we want to see whether that our digestive enzyme as real life will be uh, destroy this uh, peptide. Actually, we found they are very stable, very stable. Uh, and uh, one, the GMN, you, you see that GMN NLTP, heptapeptide code fragment. I have that LCMSMS data, I don't want to show you. So, but even though it was fragmented, the activity was very nice, right? They uh, fragmented into four and three, uh, two fragments. So they were uh, active in their body. So, and we want to see whether how that, uh, you know, clinically that how the you know, cytotoxic effect, actually we did it for the various cells, uh, but we want to see that other kinetics, especially for the clinical approval. That's all we did. Thank you, sir. If there's time, I can I ask a question, yeah. um, Dr. Kalpa, um, uh, um, that you have a model, right, for yeah. the, the peptide, like uh, the, what was it, like a hydrophobic one at the beginning and uh, yeah, an aromatic one, and, but your second peptide, uh, does it really fit into that? No, actually, yeah. madam, that based on the literature, the anti-hypertensive uh, peptide, or called anti-ACE active peptide, bioactive peptides are most common in the tribe peptide. So in that terms, we found our peptide, three molecule uh, amino acid peptide also having good activity. And there are a lot of peptides uh, being isolated from the natural resources. Maybe actually less than 10 uh, amino acid sequence peptides are very common. So you know that how to synthesize mechanically or the commercially, we find they are below than 10 amino acid sequence. So that's why we want to Transform in that way, and the hepta peptide be isolated. Also, we trying to say that okay, proline in there in the amino acid chain, so that has a other effect. So, kind of different uh, mechanism, you can say this peptide are commercially, uh, you know, can uh, market with the anti hypertensive uh, activity. Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, with that clarification, shall we move on to the next presentation? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kalpo, for your uh, uh, wonderful presentation. The work is authored by D. Dushanan, MSS Veerasingha, D. P. Disanayaka, R. Senthilin, Iti. Right? So, what do you, uh, uh, R. Dushanan, 
for the presentation. Good morning, all of you. Uh, good morning, all of you. I am Dushan from Open University of Sri Lanka. The title of my abstract is Insights from the Computational Approach to Predict the Inhibitory Efficacy of the HDAC Inhibitor on the HDLP Enzyme. The summary of my work is calculated the stability of a variety of uh, HDLP inhibitor complex and the APO system. And finally, we Finally, we predicted the more efficient inhibitor to inhibit the HDLP enzyme. This is uh, gone through by the fully computational approach. So these are the outline of my presentation. Introduction. Uh, what is cancer? Actually, it's difficult to produce an overarching definition of what constitutes cancer. However, simply we can define as uncontrolled multiplication of abnormal cells to produce a tumor mass that can interfere with the function of body's organ. Uh, cancer can cause by genetic base and epigenetic modifications. Normally genetic base are irreversible process, but the epigenetic modifications can reverse. Therefore, this work is considered about the epigenetic modifications. Epigenetic modifications are gene on off switchability, which are manipulated by the semi-reversible covalent chemical modification. Also, these type of epigenetic modifications are taking place in DNA bases and the uh, proteins associated with the DNA. For an example, uh, DNA methylation in the DNA strand and histone deacetylation in histone. Uh, this work is belongs to histone deacetylation process. So transcription and silencing mechanism of histone deacetylase enzyme in histone protein. Uh, histone deacetylase enzyme induce positive charge on the lysine residue in histone, which increase the affinity between the histone and DNA because already the lysine residue has the positive charge and DNA has the negative charge uh, phosphate group. Therefore, the affinity between these plus and minus are increase and attraction will increase. Therefore, the transcription factor regulator gene will turn to inaccessible state. Therefore, transcription and silencing will take place. Therefore, abnormal cell division will take place. This is the known as cancer state. So objective of this project is uh, develop a computational method to investigate atomic or molecular level description of relative binding strength of the inhibitor molecules in histone deacetylase enzyme. Uh, using the above method, investigate how the HDAC inhibitors change the environment of the active site of the HDLP enzyme. Also the theoretical derived model can predict the efficacies of cancer drugs in the phase two and phase three clinical trials, which will reduce the length of time and cost of clinical trials being invested in cancer research. So this is the methodology. Uh, molecular dynamic simulation work was carried out on the HDLP inhibitor complex, followed by the residue analysis to study the stability of the complex in terms of Ramachandran plot and DSHP analysis, uh, MD simulation. Uh, protein topologies were generated by GROMOS 53A6 force field, and also the force field parameters for inhibitors were generated using ProDrug server. The autodoc Vena was used to uh, perform the docking, and the docked complex was placed in the simulation box. The box size is defined here. Also, the box is, then box is sulfated with the water molecules to give a flexible movement of protein and the ligand or then the required amount of sodium plus science were added to neutralize the system. And three consecutive energy minimization steps was performed and system was equilibrated. After that, 100 nanoseconds of MD simulation was conducted. So this is the structure of the HDLP enzyme. The PDP code of the HDLP enzyme is 1ZZ1.PDP. Also the studied structures are given here, SAHA, TSA and GCK. 1026. Here, the Saha is considered as a reference drug because Saha is the well known and approved drug by the FDA. Therefore, this is considered as a reference drug. And we compared the behavior of the Saha with the TSA and GCK 1026. Uh, trajectory analysis 
the out file obtained from the molecular dynamics was used to perform the trajectory analysis. The Ramachandran plot and DSSP were prepared for uh, wild type HTLP enzyme and the HTLP inhibitor complex and the results were compared with each other. Results and discussion first the Ramachandran plot. Uh, Ramachandran plot is used to validate the position and stability of each amino acid residue in a protein. The three Ramachandran plot contains three regions. The regions are shown here. Uh, favored region, allowed region, and the disallowed region. So here the results given for wild type HTLP. The wild type HTLP has uh, 225 amino acids in the favored region. It's around 74 percentage. This is the results for uh, wild type or free type HTLP enzyme. Here we showed the uh, results of Saha TSA and GCK1026. Here the Saha complex, Saha and TSA complex has more number of amino acids than the wild type HDLP in the favored region. It's around 88% of amino acids of Saha complex SA in favored region. Likewise, 82.2% of uh, amino acids from the TSA complex is in the favored region. This is more than the wild type HDLP. Wild type has 74%. So we can say that the Saha and the TSA inhibitors are drive the HDLP enzyme to the uh, stable state. Also, the RAM uh, GCK1026 complex shows 73% of amino acids in the favorite region. So, next is DSSP analysis, defined secondary structure of proteins. So, VMD software was used to analyze the secondary structure of the HDLP enzyme uh, in all HDLP inhibitor complexes. The identification of secondary structure is an important step in the comparative study of HDLP enzyme. Uh, structure changes take place in the amino acids of the HDLP enzyme will cause stability variation. It means uh, the stability will increase or decrease. Commonly, the alpha helical structure is more stable than the beta sheet structure in the physiological or blood pH. Therefore, comparatively, we can say that high number of alpha helical, helical structures and low number of beta sheet will be considered as a more stable enzyme structure. So these are the results obtained from the DSSP analysis. Here A is the free type of wild type HTLP, B, C, D, R, Saha, TSA, and GCK1026. Here you can see that the table, uh, free type HTLP has 33.05% of alpha helical structure and 18.35% of beta sheet structure. Here also you can see that Saha and TSA are increase the number of alpha helical structures in the HTLP enzyme whereas decrease the beta sheet structure. But the GCK1026 has uh, same number of alpha helical structure and somewhat more number of beta sheet structure. Here also these results are correlated with the results of Ramachandran plot. So additionally, we did the uh, structural analysis of the inhibitor. So the HDAC inhibitors can be divided into three regions cap region, space region, and the sink binding region. Uh, cap region is for the surface recognition, and the space region is containing two parts, connecting unit and a linker unit. Uh, this helps to spanning the enzyme catalytic pocket, and sink binding region for bind with sink ion. <clears throat> also, the space length is uh, playing a major role in the inhibitory efficacy because uh, this is the space region is the part which interact more with the amino acids of the HDLP enzyme uh, through hydrogen bond or hydrophobic interaction. So this is the part interact more with the amino acids. Therefore, the higher space length was found to be the best for the maximum efficacy. So you can see here TSA has the 7.82 angstrom space length and it's comparable with Saha because Saha has the 6.27. Uh, seven angstroms. So finally, we are moving to the conclusion. Uh, the results of this in silico study demonstrate that HDLP Saha and HDLP TSA complexes uh, show more stability than the wild type HDLP. Also, TSA and Saha has the more efficacy to inhibit the HDLP enzyme. Therefore, it's evident that TSA has a potential to be used as an alternative to the reference drug Saha. Uh, for the inhibition of histone deacetylation. In contrast, 
GCK 1026 shows some deviation from TSA and Saha. It means it has low number of amino acids in the favored region and high number of beta sheet structure. Such behavior um, reduce the efficacy. Also, the IC50 values of the, these drugs and the binding affinity also give the same trend, like uh, same trend of the computational observations. Uh, so these are the some reference I used for this study. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, so the paper is open for the discussion. Uh, Mr. Dushnan, yes, sir. I remember you, you are a, a regular participant at KGIRC and thank yes. you for that to us again, once again. And uh, we have really appreciate all your work. Thanks. But I am I'm, I'm concerned about one simple uh, thing in all in your studies uh, since very beginning up to now. And your main focus is in comput computational work. Yes. But still, it could be a research. Yes. Sir. Why don't you think about including at least a, a fraction of, I, I mean, including a original data in your analysis, original data raised by your group or your team or you. Basically what is happening is uh, you obtain some data from some source and you do, you do the computational work on your disk. So yes. we have to satisfy the requirements to be an original research here. So if you uh, think positively on this particular comment, probably it would uh, uh, improve your career achievement in future drastically. Please uh, think about including original original data. Uh, these are things, sir. These are my original data collected from the computational studies, sir. And hope we hope to do the experimental part also, sir. Yes, that is it. But I'm telling you, you have Thank to you. do Thank you, sir. Data and then you go to computational work. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, Dushanta, I have a small uh, doubt on the on the work that you have presented. Yes. Now, uh, now you're talking about the stabilization of uh, uh, this on DS stylase. Yes. So are you thinking is this process is universal or specific regions? I'm asking with this, uh, with some, some aspect in my head. So you, are, you, are, you are saying that uh, the three compounds or the three uh, targets are uh, stabilizing. So this stabilization, is it in terms of the specific uh, regions or is it universal? There is a zinc binding pocket, sir. It's an active site. So while docking, uh, we did around 17 compounds we docked and tested for the results. All these are going to the zinc pocket and they binding with the zinc cofactor. And also the we find that such panaminostat are more efficient drug. So those are stabilize the HDLP enzyme. Why so, I'm this, yeah, why I'm asking this question now? If it is act as a universal stabilizer, so then you might have a problem of the normal house scheme gene regulations as well. Now, if you are if you are looking for this as a anti-cancer novel drug bleed, so probably you have to focus on the 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 genes that are interested or that are upregulated on that particular type of a cancer or the tumor. But if it is a universal, so you might have a problem of the other genes which are housekeeping as well. So this is my thought. Have you, okay. uh, yeah. I'll check.
think uh, there's a good suggestion uh, uh, because now a number of people are working on the novel anti-cancer drug leads and uh, as a, a compounds and all that. So probably you can work one of them and see how your computational analysis will work for uh, those. And probably it is a, it is a intergroup uh, interactions and then the things can uh, move forward in a better way. Uh, I think that, that was a good suggestion. So you can think of, uh, you can have a bit of a intergroup collaboration as well. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, so having, uh, thank you very much, Dushantan. And then we- Thank will, you, sir. Yeah. We will into the next presentation. So we're targeting HER2 positive breast cancer cells by body label, uh, jet, jefitinib loaded apoferritin nanoparticles. So the paper is authored by A.I. Kurupu, L. Zhang, uh, L. Rashank, and Thomas, and T.D. Bradshaw. So over to you, uh, Dr. Kurupu, for the presentation. So my uh, topic today is targeting HER2 positive breast cancer cells by a labeled uh, jefferty loaded apophyllotic nanoparticle. Okay, so let me begin my presentation by asking a question. Why is cancer an important topic today? Now, cancer is an important topic because it's a leading cause of death, accounting for nearly 10 million new cases, 10 million deaths, and nearly 20 million new cases in year 2020, which was last year, according to WHO. And cancer is only second to cardiovascular diseases globally. Um, the overall um, cancer incidence and the death rate has increased very rapidly and the common causes for this could be increased age, physical and chemical carcinogens, genetics, our diet and nutrition, tobacco smoke, and physical inactivity. Now, why is breast cancer important? Breast cancer is important because it's the most frequently diagnosed cancer among females globally, just like the first speaker said today in the presentation. And it is the most common cancer in Sri Lanka as well, with nearly 30,000 new cases and nearly 17,000 deaths last year in Sri Lanka, which is 2020. Now, breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease, and about 2.26 million new cases have been found in 2020. So that's about one in eight women in most countries, which is actually a lot. Now, uh, breast cancer can be classified according to hormonal receptor, which means uh, estrogen receptor and the progesterone receptor status, and also according to the HER2 status. Breast cancers which are positive for the HER2 receptor demonstrate very aggressive clinical behavior, and out of all breast cancers, 25% of uh, breast cancers are HER2 positive. So we actually need new agents that target her too, because the existing um, drugs that we have show resistance in the clinic. So the aim of the project was actually to uh, develop a new agent, which is a nano agent, uh, which targets the HER2 positive breast cancer type. Right, so uh, nanoparticles actually are very small particles. They range from about one to 100 nanometers and apophyllotin is also a nanoparticle. So apophyllotin means it's actually the iron-free form of ferritin, um, which has been shown to be a very good delivery system. Some of the features of ap apophyllotin are biocompatibility, biodegradability, and it's stable even up to temperatures more than 80 Celsius. 
Upfilting can be quite small, as I told before. It has an outer diameter of 12 nanometers and an inner diameter of eight nanometers where we can actually um, load any kind of molecule within it uh, in the hollow core. So what we did was in this study, we, we labeled apophilatin with a HER2 targeting antibody molecule to improve the targeting to the HER2 receptor of uh, breast cancer cells. So antibody molecules are actually uh, the, the one that we used here has very high affinity to the HER2 receptor. It's a very small uh, protein, which is about six kilodaltons. So now Jepitinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor given in the clinic for non-small cell lung cancer and also certain breast cancers. And um, it's actually frequently used to target the HER family of receptors, especially EGFR. And what we did here was we encapsulated jeptinib uh, into apophyrotene by two methods, by the diffusion method and the pH root. Why we did that was because apophyrotene has eight hydrophilic uh, channels and six hydrophobic channels on its surface. So because of this, you can actually allow transport of any molecules in and out of the apophyrotene. And also, uh, apophyrotin is pH responsive. So it disassembles at a very low pH, such as um, two. And again, it reassembles at higher pHs, more than five. So we use the diffusion method actually to, um, to um, encapsulate our drug molecules using the, the channels on the surface while we use the pH root with its uh, pH responsible, pH responsive feature. So what we did next was we wanted to confirm that uh, whether jeopardinib molecules were actually encapsula encapsulated within our apophyrotein uh, nanoparticle. We went on doing transmission electron microscopy. And as you can see here on the second image, the, the dark dense area showed that the jeopardinib uh, was actually encapsulated within apophyrotein and actually the apophyrotein um, molecule wasn't changed. So this is why we did TEM to confirm the encapsulation. Moving on, we looked at cell viability using MTT assay. As you can see here, we used two cell lines. We used the SKBR3 cell line, which is a HER2 O-expressing cell line, which is the positive control. And we used MDAMB231 cell line, which is a triple negative cell line as a negative control. As you can see in the table here, if I move the, as you can see in the table here, um, so we used um, the, the nanoparticle which was assembled using the diffusion route and also the nanoparticle which was assembled using the pH route. And we also tested uh, Jeopardinib alone. And you can see here that um, the nanoparticle which was assembled using the diffusion route was the most potent, which showed a GI50 value of 0 0.009 micromolar. And the diffusion route actually displayed twofold enhanced potency against the HER2 expressing SKBR3 cell line compared to even the pH route. And the same agent was actually 100 times more potent than the free Jeffertonib molecules. And also um, the nanoparticles assembled by the pH root is also actually about 40 times more potent than free jeptonib. So what we did next was we then thought, okay, we will choose the uh, nanoparticle which um, showed very high potency and we, we will look at the mechanism of action uh, in more detail. We looked at um, colony formation. So here what we did was um, we looked whether single SKBR3 cells are able to make colonies in the presence of drug for a short time, for about 24 hours. 
So uh, again, we use control FKBR3 um, cells without any um, drug. We use jefferdinib alone, the free drug. And we also use the nanoparticle, which was uh, assembled using the diffusion method, which was the most potent in the MTT assay. As you can see here in the images, we found that when we looked at the survival fraction, we found that Jeffrey alone showed a survival fraction of 60% when we used two times GI50. And we found that the survival fr fraction was 16% was very cytotoxic uh, when we used the, the nanoparticle, which was assembled using the diffusion method and which was great actually. So then we moved on looking at um, perturbations of cell cycle. Again, we use SKBR3 cells and you can see the histograms here. The, the first two histograms are quite similar actually, the control cells and the cells which were treated with free jefferdinib. Again, we used a two times uh, GI50 uh, concentration here. As you can see here in the final histogram, we actually saw that there was a diminished or a very reduced synthesis phase and a G2M phase. With the, with the nanoparticle that was assembled using the diffusion method. Actually, the synthesis phase was reduced by 30% compared to control cells, and the G2M phase was reduced by 20% um, compared to control cells. We then looked at the effect on HER2 protein expression using Western blot, um, using SKBR3 cells. And we obviously saw very good uh, HER2 expression levels in control cells, as you can see in the first row. And secondly, we, we saw that the HER2 expression levels were uh, down-regulated when jefferdinib was used. And obviously, when we use a nanoparticle, which was assembled using the diffusion method, the HER2 expression levels, as well as the phosphorylated HER2 expression levels were diminished or down-regulated. This was actually great and we use GAP-DH as the housekeeping um, gene here. And the results were highly significant. So in summary, the enhanced activity with the nanoparticle assembled by the diffusion method compared to um, the pH root was, uh, was great against the SKBR3 uh, cell line. Um, however, both agents were potent compared to Jeffrey alone and the nanoparticle assembled via the diffusion route showed good cytotoxic effects in SKBR3 colony formation. It also showed uh, a reduced S and G2M phase in cell cycle analysis, and also down regulation of HER2 and phosphorylated HER2. I would like to acknowledge my supervisor, Dr. Tracy Bradshaw, uh, for this um, support during this project and her colleagues, Dr. Ludmila Kurianska and Professor Neil Thomas, and also Dr. Le Zhang, who continued this project after I left Nottingham because this project was a part of my postdoctoral research uh, in Nottingham. Thank you very much for listening. And these are some of the references that I used um, for this study. Thank you again. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Angela, for the wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, so the paper is open for discussion. Uh, Dr. Kuruku, is there any uh, specific uh, concentration of the drugs that you have used? Yes, so um, we use the MTT assay as um, we, we first did an MTT assay to look at the cell viability, and then we got the GI50 uh, values, and then we went on using those concentrations uh, for all the other experiments. Does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, please, from the audience? Angela, uh, I, I have a few uh, uh, queries, but this wonderful platform where you can uh, uh, think of uh, targeted drug, drug deliveries. Okay? Uh, so do you work on uh, uh, the stability of this uh, apophertin loaded uh, your drug with the, with the existence of uh, iron? 
Uh, uh, the is meant for transporting of serum ion. Yeah. Probably how, how that would interfere with this uh, loading. Yeah, so what uh, we actually used here was apoferritin, so uh, the iron molecule. So usually in ferritin, we can load about 4,500 molecules in the cavity. And in apoferritin, all the molecules have been removed. So the, when this actually um, can be used in vivo and in humans, it can actually uh, probably yes, can make a bit of a problem, maybe an immunogenic um, issue and so on. So we haven't tried... Um, loading any molecules when the ferritin is already within the cavity. Um, yes, that is, I think, a very good uh, area to test as well because it might interfere with the iron. Um, so we have actually taken out all the iron molecules and we have taken apoferritin, which is um, having a hollow core inside and it becomes a biocompatible molecule. So that, yeah, that, that would be a better way of uh, to have that address. Other thing is why you didn't uh, work on the MCF7. So that is because, uh, um, so because we were targeting the HER2 um, receptor. So we wanted to look at obviously uh, a positive cell line and uh, MCF7 would have been a good negative control as well. But the reason why we chose MDA231 was because MDA231 has um, a huge amount of EGFR ex expression. So although I didn't tell that in the presentation, so we thought we can use a um, cell line which shows EGF or expresses EGFR as well and to see whether actually it's showing any, any kind of uh, activity because uh, jeprenib is actually a molecule which targets EGFR, whereas MCF7 does not uh, have or express EGFR. And that was the reason why we chose MDA231 as the negative control. Any other questions, please? Okay, if there's no question, uh, shall we? Thank you, Dr. Anchala Kuruku, for your wonderful presentation. And then we will move into the next. Determine the reference intervals of selected tumor markers using selected healthy individual adult population in Sri Lanka. So the paper is authored by D.R. M. Panagoda, G. H. R. E. Karmaratna, V. Abezuria, and L. Chandrasen. So what do you, uh, D.R. M. Panagoda, for the present? You can start. Uh, can you share the screen? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my research topic is good, uh, determine the reference intervals of selected tumor markers using selected healthy adults in Sri Lankan population. Uh, next slide. In introduction, reference intervals is crucial for disease screening, diagnosis, monitoring, progression, and treatment efficacy. Due to lack of locally derived reference values for the parameters, reference intervals derived from Western population is widely used in the most of the laboratories. And the different studies also indicated considerable variation in clinical chemistry reference intervals by several variables such as age and gender. Next slide. Next slide, please. The main objective of this study was aimed to determine the reference intervals values of selected tumor market tests alpha fetoprotein, AFP, carcinoembryonic antigen, CEA, phosphate-specific antigen, PSA, and CA125, according to the age and gender using selected healthy adults population of Columbus City, Sri Lanka. 
and also this may be the first private sector study previous uh, this may be the first private sector study to establish reference intervals using sri lankan population considering age and gender next slide in this cross sectional study conveniently sample clinical records of healthy adults living in colombo the main city of sri lanka were selected from existing database of navaloka hospital a laboratory for 8 months period starting from march 2019 through october 2019 based on inclusion exclusion criteria 1054 individual records including uh, 670 males and 384 females were ultimately selected for this study the exclusion criteria included male and female elders between 18 to 80 years old and uh, age less than 18 years adults with common intestinal parasitic infections hemoparasites hiv hcv hbv positive and hcg positive for females hospitalized persons chronic disease cardiovascular disease kidney diseases were excluded from this study Uh, next slide all statistical calculations were performed on the minitab version 17.3.1 software and descriptive statistics was used to determine the mean median 95% coefficient interval minimum maximum and 2.5 Ninety-seven point fifth percentile range of each parameter. P-value less than zero point zero five, we consider as statistically significant. Next slide. Uh, moving into the results part, we can see the there are uh, there was significant difference in the reference values of CEA. and afp according to the gender but the reference intervals of psa ca125 were not significantly different according to the gender the analyzed reference intervals values of psa afp across all age of participants were similar but there was significant difference in the values of ca125 cea according to the age group next slide according to our results we uh, we can conclude um, we considered p value less than 0.05 as significant different then uh, we conclude our findings as reference intervals of CEA test is significantly different according to the gender. The CA125 and CEA test are significantly different according to the age group. Therefore, uh, next slide. Therefore, strict adherence to the reference values generated in developed countries could lead inappropriate diagnosis and treatment of patient some of the determine, determined reference intervals of q markers were significantly different according to the age and gender therefore further studies needed to be carried out to confirm these findings using higher sample sizes for sri lankan population next slide uh these are the references that i used next slide next slide okay 
Finally, I acknowledge Navalok Research and Education Foundation and the laboratory staff of Navalok PLC Colombo to give me the opportunity to collect data from their database. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Anagoda, uh, for your uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, okay, the paper is uh, open for discussion. Ms. Panagoda, you are not showing your results graphically or otherwise. That's a limitation in your presentation. I'm telling these things for constructive purposes so that you can rectify your errors. I'm also wondering whether you, know, you collected data from some source which involves laboratory or clinical laboratory analysis of pertinent patients attending the attending a particular hospital. Yeah. Have you got ethical approval for this kind of stuff? That is my yes. question. Yes, I got ethical approval from uh, our local hospital. Is it an accredited, accredited institute to issue uh, ethical approvals? I don't know. Right. Uh, then you have to have patient consent to use your data, use their data. So address these issues uh, in your future work. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then I have some problems with the methodology you use. I think you have to include the methods you used in your research in the presentation section. And the second, I have some suggestion that in other countries, they have developed some uh, uh, okay, intervals, reference intervals by using uh, bank donors. The blood bank donors are the best control, a healthy control group uh, we are using worldwide. They are in future studies group. Yeah. Question, uh, Ms. Panagodan. Yes. Um, I think um, I haven't really understood the significance of your uh, research. Probably I didn't catch it. So that's why I'm asking just for curiosity. So why was it important to um, see the differences in the RI value? Because they are different tumor markers, right? They probably would be having different RI values. Um, what was the significance for why, why did you want to do check whether there is a difference in the RI value among different uh, tumor markers? Uh, uh, for, uh... There is a possibility of uh, inappropriate diagnosis of some clinical diagnosis for healthy adults. So that uh, very important to uh, establish uh, reference values for Sri Lankan population. Yes, but uh, I think maybe because you are not showing the results um, as uh, I think Dr. Gunavikrama said that uh, it is difficult to understand. Uh, so your study population is uh, this the patients or normal health, this is healthy persons right healthy person okay so so did you do the test yourselves or did you just did you do this um, uh, this assessment no i collect data from the database okay i didn't do it yeah. I have a question. Uh, you have told in your exclusion criteria that you haven't taken patients with intestinal parasitic infections. Yeah. 
Yes. So how do you uh, screen them? Uh, actually, I'm not a, a medical student. Yeah. Uh, I uh, have they tested on that uh, or you have just cast them on the, because of this general parasitic infections and those things have you tested on them or like they are they having the results or some kind of a results or you just ask a question whether they are awareness that you check whether they are having no, or not uh, we collect data from um, only the healthy adults so you assume that they do, do not have intestinal parasitic infections. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, Miss Panagode, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm listening to this uh, presentation. This I feel don't want to discourage you. One thing I find uh, there's a bit of issue on your uh, methodology. One thing, the protocols that you have adapted for the measurement. Have they validated? That is the first question. Because whatever the data that you are generating by adapting an unvalidated protocol gives you a misleading outcome. Is one thing. And then uh, how fair are you you can quote this as a Sri Lankan population by taking a small fragment of a uh, patient who's admitted to the hospital. So that is also, if it is, if you are generalizing this as a Sri Lankan population, it has to be, the uh, sample number should be very more than this. Uh, so those are the few things, uh, because the thing is when you are giving the RI, right, you have to be really, really careful because if it is, uh, if it is if you're suggesting to adapt that RI for the diagnosis, uh, we should be really careful not to have the false positive and false negative there. Especially on this tumor marker, uh, that is very important uh, as the diagnosis. Right? So, um, nevertheless, but I I appreciate your attempt, right, um, of undertaking this kind of a work, and uh, probably you can uh, fine tune your work in future and be more precise and to uh, be more uh, calm on the on the methodology and go forward. Right? I'm not discouraging you, right? It is very good uh, because as a young uh, uh, in, uh, researcher, right? Uh, so I'm not discouraging at all, but please be addressed uh, to those concerned and then see whether you can improve the study. Okay. Any other, any other suggestions, please, concerns? Okay, so uh, so we don't uh, so since we have no other questions, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Panagoda, for your presentation. And then with that, I think we are coming to the conclusion of this particular session. Uh, so uh, it's it was very wonderful uh, time with uh, diverse presentation on diverse area. Probably it's a it's a process of learning and uh, sharing the expertise and experience. And uh, so at the end of the day, what we really want to know is to move forward the science in Sri Lanka, how we can make it effectively utilized and then have a, a perhaps a building up the teamwork, which is not I can see. Uh, so that is what we really want to look at. There's no point of uh, doing science in isolated, isolated uh, cubicles. Uh, so you need to go for the network is sort of a thing. That is what uh, happening in the other countries, why they are productive, but we unfortunately for some reason I'm not seeing here. Uh, so perhaps uh, we can uh, we can think of that line as well in moving the science uh, much more effective way and be useful. Uh, because the thing is certain cells, they have their own expertise. And uh, so probably it is sharing and having the experiences and the brainstorming. Uh, so probably that kind of work we need, need to be thinking of. Thank you very much for the organizers. Uh, and then I think this was a bit of uh, the very productive session for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, Professor Gartene, for your very valuable contribution as the chairperson for this session. We will now have a small break. Please continue to stay with us. We 
we'll be back by 10 30 a.m to start the second te technical session as per the schedule thank you